a wise and frugal government, which shall restrain men from injuring one another, shall leave them otherwise free to regulate their own pursuits of industry and improvement, and shall not take from the mouth of labor the bread it has earned. This is the sum of good government. That quote is an economic quote from Thomas Jefferson. He is the founding father of liberty and is personally my favorite founding father because of his firm commitment to individual liberty, free market capitalism, and constitutionally limited government. Karl Marx's preferred economic system of socialism led to the abolition of private property rights. It punished success and achieved its eventual goal of government ownership of virtually everything in the marketplace. We see the, the destructive results of socialism throughout the entire world. It leads to massive poverty, good shortages, lower labor force participation rates, lower GDP, and eventually more sickness, and sadly, more times than not, it leads to an earlier grave. Today, I'd like to share with you all several valid arguments as to why free market capitalism makes society much more prosperous than the destructive economic system of top-down government of socialism. We'll discuss the conveniences that come along with the innovation of capitalism. Lower prices, higher quality products and higher pay due to marketplace competition, and the destruction of government intervention in the marketplace that leads to full-blown socialism and eventually communism. If it weren't for the free, free marketplace and capitalism, we would not be enjoying today the modern conveniences that is allowed from freedom of ingenuity to create. Most of us have a smartphone. Think with me if you will. We either have an Android or an iPhone. If it were not for tech companies such as Apple, Dell, Samsung, we would be lost without it, would we not? If it were not for a business freely hiring laborers who are agreeing in return to make a product, Selling the product to consumers who freely choose to purchase the product, we will not have the smartphone. That is capitalism. It's the benefit of a voluntary society where people are free to engage in tra transactions with one another to benefit themselves respectively. Remember, there is no transaction in the free marketplace that isn't good for both parties involved. Can you find these technological conveniences and advances we enjoy here in America? Can you find those in a socialistic third world country? Sadly, you cannot. Absolutely not. Competition drives and fuels the marketplace and enhances the economic well-being of a society as a whole. Competition keeps businesses on their toes. That is good for me and you, the consumer. Businesses compete with one another to make the best products. We sell the, and excuse me, they sell the products at the lowest cost. Consumer choice determines, me and you determine, the winners and losers in the marketplace. The free market adapts to the needs and desires of consumers. That's you and I. Same goes for the labor force. Me and you are employed by business. Those businesses and employers will offer competitive wages and benefits so the best workers and laborers will go where they are desired, thus leading to the non-stop flow of the best product and laborers to the best places where they are most desired, wanted, and needed. Socialism leads to the economic decay and destruction of prosperity and kills ingenuity, discourages work, and leads to misery and stagnation. Late great Prime Minister of Great Britain, Margaret Thatcher once said, and she said it best when she stated, that the problem with socialism is that you eventually run out of other people's money. There's just so much you can regulate and so much you can tax until the overall economic system of your country collapses. That is the destruction, my friends, of socialism. Government cannot determine the price of bread. All great nations fall when people realize they can vote people in office who will give them free things. This leads to the end of competition. It discourages work, makes people dependent upon government, 
which takes away our economic freedom and our individual liberty and directly and negatively impacts the quality of life of its people. Socialism, in conclusion, makes life miserable, and capitalism makes people prosperous and free to achieve their own pursuits of ministry. All in all, we now understand that capitalism best contributes to the economic and financial well-being of society as a whole, and socialism directly negatively affects people and causes misery. The last time we tried the most free form of free market capitalism, remember, we as the United States of America still have not had a true free market society. We, we have a mixed economy, which means government, government does play a role in our economic system, which leads to higher unemployment, lower labor force participation rates, declining health, and increase in poverty. Once we try a true free market that is free and prosperous, that is when we will truly be a rich, wealthy, and free country, and freer and more prosperous than any country that has ever been graced by God on this earth. Once we allow free people to be free, once we champion freedom and free markets, that is when we will achieve our overall success as a, as a country as a whole. But the last time that we tried the truest free form of, uh, of, of capitalism that we've had in America, which it was not as free as it should have been, but under Ronald Reagan, we slashed, we slashed taxes, we slashed regulation. That led to the, to the highest and, and largest economic growth and, and peacetime expansion economically in U.S. history. And that was just a dose of free market capitalism. Just think if we tried it in its fullest capacity. And also in conclusion, a free and prosperous society is a society that allows people to freely conduct transactions and engage in contracts with one another. It champions private property rights and allows for the free movement of goods, trade, and labor that is free of taxation, free of government intervention and cronyism and favoritism free of subsidy, tariff, and regulation. That is the sum of good government. That is a champion of freedom as a champion of free markets. Free markets make free people and makes free people prosperous. Thank you.